In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When people ask me how am I doing, I tell them I'm well and alive. So it's all good to see you this Sunday and to see that you are well and alive. <laughs> A few days ago, as I was starting to work on this homily, I was talking to someone from our parish and I said, can you imagine, here I am, a non-American, going to deliver a, a homily to the American about all saints of North America. And she responds, don't worry, they're all your friends, you'll be fine. <laughs> okay. I often ask myself how all of these events have happened. Me, teaching catechism to the Americans in English, English being my second language, and I see the providence of God and His plan for each one of us. Last Sunday was the Sunday of all the saints. Today, it is the feast of all the local saints. If you are on Mount Athos, it is the feast of all the saints of Mount Athos. If you are in Russia, it is the feast of all saints of Russia. For us Orthodox Christians here, it is the feast of all saints of North America. There may be a handful of them, but thank God we have them. The icon that most of us have seen of all saints of North America to my left and to your right are the following saints. Saint Herman of Alaska, Saint Juvenali, Saint Peter the Alude, Saint Innocent, Saint Tihon, and Saint John of Shanghai and Saint Francisco. It is important to mention that there are many more Eventually, we will learn more about their holy lives. One of the procurements today, on today's line states, God is wonderful in His saints, God of Israel. Often we read this verse, but do we really understand it? Why are the saints so wonderful and what did they do? What does it mean to be a saint? Our goal is for the church to grow. We don't want God's creation to die, but to be sanctified by His grace. The church always has room for more people, and we are called to be saints. We are called to be God's by grace. The history of our salvation has begun at the cross at Golgotha, where our sweet Lord was crucified. That is where He has shown us that we are called to imitate Christ and become, and become holy. There, at the cross, He also has shown us that without Golgotha, there's no resurrection. Jesus Christ Himself is our prototype of what is, it is to be holy. The Bible states, For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Man becomes holy and sainted by participation in the holiness of God. How can we deny the concept of sainthood in our Orthodox Church? It originated neither from me, nor a priest, nor a bishop, but from, our, from Christ Himself. It is very important to understand, and I always, always tell people in my Catechism classes that there is a difference between the words worshipping and venerating. We only worship God, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Trinity one in essence and undivided. But we venerate our Heavenly Queen, the Most Holy Theotokos, and all the saints. As I have mentioned earlier, Jesus Christ is our prototype of what it is for men to be holy. There are a few concepts that I would like to bring to your attention so that you may receive a better understanding. One concept is the imitation of Christ. In the scriptural and patristic context, imitating Christ embraces man's whole journey towards deification, which is the ultimate goal. According to St. Maximus the Confessor, a person will experience it according to the depth of his spiritual life. Therefore, we are called to live Christ incarnation, epiphany, transfiguration, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. St. Maximus talks about the three stages of salvation and degrees of spiritual life. First one, practical philosophy, which is purification, the ascetical labor, 
things we do out of love for Christ. The second one is natural vision of God or illumination. And the third one is, is mystical theology or deification. And we do find that in the life of the saints. All things that a person learns should increase his love for Christ. Another concept is kenosis. The term kenosis means self-emptying and refers to Christ taking on human nature and making his human will nothing by pouring himself out. This term refers to the doctrine of Christ self-emptying in his incarnation particularly. Jesus Christ emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. The, the word translated as emptied is a form of the word keno in Greek, from which we get the word kenosis. What this really means is that he himself came down to fulfill the divine economy and show us how to be holy. He emptied himself for our sake. These two concepts, imitation of Christ and kenosis, help us understand that it, what it means to be holy and to strive towards holiness. We're not going to go out on the streets and tell everyone that we're holy, God forbid. <laughs> holiness is an individual workout that is between God and us. The saints who lived the gospel never, never wanted to be well known, but their love for Christ made them holy and God allowed their holiness to be known to us for our edification. Likewise, humble people do not say that they're humble, but their life in Christ makes them achieve a high level of humility. Everything has to be done with extreme humility because it will bring us closer to God and humility has given our church the saints. All saints of North America, when I think of them, the first thing comes into my mind is the will of God. His providence. To understand the saints who lived on this continent, we must read their lives where we will see how they fully gave themselves unto God's will. That same will brought them here in America. To talk about each one of them in depth would take us hours. They all arrived on this land and performed various ecclesiastical missions with one, only one motivation their love for God and their obedience to His providence throughout their lives. Here on the West Coast, we have a saint who is only an hour and 20 minutes away from our parish, Saint John of Shanghai and Saint Francisco, a well-known saint of our time who got allowed not only to be on, on this continent, but to have his holy relics next to us and to be incorrupted. St. John moved from Kharkov to Belgrade, from Bitola all the way to Shanghai, then from Tubaba to Belgium, and then he became Archbishop of Western America. Did he want to pack his suitcase and move from place to place? I would not want that in the first place. Every time there was a new assignment for him, he humbly accepted it. His humility and obedience to God illumined him and made him a saint. St. John gave himself to the people. He did not speak English, but he spoke the language of the church, love and serving. As a result, he brought his people together, who at the time were divided. The beautiful cathedral was built in San Francisco, and even he was given to the civil court, and the American judge saw his innocence and holiness. If I'm not mistaken, he told everybody, told people there, you brought an innocent man, just leave, with another words. This guy has nothing to do with what you're accusing him of. You do not have to speak the, the language, but you do have to be an imitator of Christ, and doing so will transform people's hearts. Years ago, one monk at, in Jordanville told me, we are all in need of a change of heart. The saints who lived in North America saw that need in the people's heart, in people here, and with so much love, prayer, and compassion, worked hard to make a spiritual transformation in their lives. Were they rejected in many situations? Yes. Were they humiliated? Yes. Were they mocked? 
Yes, and some of them were killed. Their pious and holy life made them endure <coughs> what they had to. These saints touched so many people's hearts and planted a seed that now is growing and we must water it. For example, Father Seraphim Rose of Blessed Memory met St. John, and if, he, if I remember correctly, St. John baptized Father Seraphim and eventually blessed him to start a monastery in Plotina. We also have a 16-year-old young martyr who did not give up his Orthodox faith, but boldly confessed it and was killed, St. Peter the Alud. During the Russian expedition into Alaska and the Spanish colonization of, Cali of California, 14 Aluds were captured by the Spanish. They were brought down to California and were encouraged by the Franciscans to convert. In response, the Aluds professed their Orthodox faith and said, we are Christians. We already believe in Christ. However, the Franciscans responded, you are heretics, you are schismatic, and you need to convert. The Aluds maintained their faith over the course of several days and weeks. They are subjected to numerous tortures having their joints broken until one of them, an Alut young boy, succumbed to the wounds. St. Hermon of Alaska, hearing about his death, asked the name of the Alut. <coughs> Upon hearing it, St. Hermon made the sign of the cross and said, Holy new martyr Peter, pray to God for us. St. Hermon of Alaska was a simple and humble monk, strong in his faith. Through his prayers, he prevented a major destruction of tsunami. He was one of the ten missionaries from the Vala Monastery sent to the Alutan Islands to bring the good news, the faith. Today, if you go to Kodiak in Alaska, you can venerate his holy relics. St. Herman fell asleep in the Lord on December 13, 18, 1837. St. Juvenali also lived on Kodiak in Alaska. Significantly, he baptized 700 Sukbiak Indians. While Bill killed, with a shower of spears and arrows, he was blessing his murderers with the sign of the cross. St. Innocent, a married, a married priest with the name of Father John previously, also came to Alaska. He developed written language for the Aleuts and taught them how to build a church or churches. After his wife died on September 27, 18, 1841, he was elected as America's first ever Orthodox Bishop. He spent most of his time traveling to different places, educating people and teaching the Gospel. St. Tihon was appointed as a Bishop to the Aleutians and was a Bishop at a time for all of North America and Canada. As we read in his life, his flock was made up of Native Americans, which are Eskimos, Aleuts, and Indians. Also, bishop to Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Greeks, Antiochians, Bulgarians, Serb, Serbs, Macedonians, Albanians, Carpeto-Russians, Romanians, and others at a time when immigration was at its peak. He worked hard to preserve the unity of the Orthodox faith among many nations in this country at a time. In his last homily in America, St. Tihon said, The light of orthodoxy is not lit for a small circle of people. It is our obligation to share our spiritual treasures, our truth, our light, our joy with those who do not have these gifts. <coughs> Here in North America, God is wonderful in his saints indeed. They have given every bit of their lives to God and to the people here. They knew that they might be mocked, stoned, or killed. In fact, some of them were, yet they gave their trust to God's providence. They gave their energy to grow the church and to plant the seed of the faith. They did not care if they would have money, a house, or a place to stay. They had God, for we know that when we have God, we have everything. The official history of North America within the church begins in 1794. Although there are historians who found out that there were Orthodox Christians operating in Williamsburg. I believe that's in um, Connecticut today. There were Americans worshiping God in an Orthodox manner. 
Imagine how wonderful that is, celebrating in Orthodox fashion during the 18th century. This information is just beginning to come to light. My beloved brothers and sisters, let us reflect on the lives of all the saints of North America, learning from their lives what they did, and most importantly, their love for God and the people here. They came to this continent to bring the good news, cared for it with unconditional love, and educated and evangelized the people day and night. They came to look for the lost sheep and to bring it to safe place, the church. Our sweet Lord brought them here for our salvation. I'm a witness that many, many people come from Orthodox countries here in America and they find God. This account reveals us that there, there is Orthodoxy here on this land. We have incorrupt saints like St. John of Shanghai and San Francisco who is in this state. We have a more streaming holy icons like the Iberon one in Hawaii and the Kursk root wonder working icon in New York. All of these miracles are signs that God has not forsaken us. So let us never, never forget that he is with us always. All saints of America, pray unto God for us and glory be to God for everything. Amen. Amen.